Okay, so good evening to all. Welcome to this IATF 16949-2016 Automotive Quality Management System Online Awareness Training Series. So why this training? So we are under lockdown mode. So during this lockdown time, the best precaution is uh, stay healthy, stay home, and we have to maintain this social distancing. So we would like to utilize this particular time for upskilling, reskilling purposes. So as part of this, we have launched this series of online training program. So as part of this, the first training is on automotive quality management system. And tomorrow we are going to have ISO 13485 medical devices quality management system. And the second April we are going to have it for uh, Railway Quality Management System, that is ISO TS22163, IRIS certification. And 3rd April, we are going to have AS9100, Aerospace Quality Management System. All these trainings, uh, we are planning to do it for two hours. This is the initial awareness training, we could say. So uh, content, uh, the pattern is going like this. One and a half hours for training program and 15 minutes, uh, we are going to have an online quiz. Yes, there is a quiz, course evaluation, we can call it like that, right? Then 15 minutes for a question and answer session. In this quiz, if you get 60% of mark, uh, you're going to get a successful participant certificate, completion certificate, just for an awareness as a token of appreciation. Okay, so all these trainings are uh, recorded, uh, conducted via this Zoom tool. Right, so that's what the whole uh, pattern. If someone felt that my voice is low, or is there any disturbance in the voice, don't worry, it's because of uh, poor net connectivity. Uh, this training is going to be recorded and we are going to upload this in our uh, YouTube page also, so we can watch it later or you can refer it to someone who would like to attend this training program. So that's what all about this training program. So if my voice is clear, the screen is visible, just type yes in chat. Perfect. So who we are? Uh, we are a Nucleus consultant. We are into consulting, auditing and training services. We did various projects on various management system. We have a team of uh, six people. We do sector specific uh, standard related management system consulting training services. We do offer some solution with respect to automotive industries, like IATF 16949, QMS requirements. And we do APQP, PPAP, the new AIAG, VDA, FMEA, then MSC, SPC. We support VDA 6.3, and we do 17025 accreditation services. And also we do a CQI, specific training and consulting services. This is what we offer to automotive industry. And we also offering to some other sector specific standards like aerospace industry, we do a lot for them. These are some of the portfolio what we do for aerospace industries. And we also do for railways, medical devices, and other sectors like telecommunication standard, then uh, high security printing industry, oil gas industry. So we do various processes. And general QMS, EMS, OHSMS, social compliance standards. This is what all about nucleus. So I'm not going to spend more time on who we are and what we do. So let's move into the subject. So what we are going to see today, a small introduction about what is this IATF 16949. Why this IATF 16949? And what are the requirements are there in this IATF 16949? I'm going to uh, pay some more attention towards class number 4567. Typically, we call it as planning. Then 8 and 9 do check act. We are going to see the highlights. What are the key requirements on these classes? If you have any specific questions or doubts, please make a note. Maybe end of q and a session we can discuss it during this training program i would like to or i'm going to ask some questions to you please answer in chat box if you know that answer right so the objective of this training 
is to create an initial level awareness at macro level what are the requirements in the standard this training doesn't make you an expert in this subject but it will give an outline it will able to grasp what the standard says that's what all about this training program okay so what is this iitf the name itself clearly says what it is international automotive task force it's an head of group of automotive manufacturers across the globe and that of trade associations are jointly formed this organization why this organization was formed the answer is very simple they want to promote quality quality products throughout the supply chain that's what the whole purpose of this iitf there are various members in iitf mainly the big automotive manufacturers i think we all are aware about these organization names they are the big uh, auto car makers vehicle manufacturers and other than that there are uh, respective trade association from usa we have aiag and we have uh, uh, vda from germany and smmt from uk so this is how the, uh, the structure of uh, iit is so the industry and the trade association are jointly formed this organization what is their purpose they wanted to make sure an international fundamental quality management system requirements for people who are supplying to automotive industry either you produce some materials you deliver some product you will provide some service to those product or like heat treatment painting some some services right so they wanted to ensure a basic fundamental quality management system so this automotive industry has tried a lot with respect to practicing quality systems initially uh, iso 9000 was there in place then qs 9000 was developed by the big three automakers and the later every uh, the country specific automakers come up with their own standard so then iso came into picture they have released iso ts 16949 then now it is become iatf 16949 so we are going to see that uh, how it was evolved also i just uh, like to highlight here why iatf what it is see the iatf develop policies and procedures and they will run the certification scheme iatf registration scheme and even they train the uh, auditors they run the entire certification program so this is the sim vision of iatf a single global automotive standard and the registration process i am repeat it again a single global automotive standard and registration process which means we are at the edge of this globalization right so an organization who make a product anywhere in the world the product is may reach to the supply chain the supply chain may sits anywhere in the globe so they wanted to make sure an uniformity so this iitf the organization was formed and they developed this iitf 16949 considering this particular vision in their mind so this will become a single automotive global standard and a single registration process so there are uh, five oversight offices located across the globe france germany italy uk and us so they they control the entire iitf processes so this is what iitf organization what it is now what is this iitf 16949 2016 So this is the first edition of uh, IATF 16949, which was released in the year of 2016. This latest version, the recent version, we could say, right? It was developed with a lot of feedback from the industry, a lot of engagement from this AIAG members. Mainly, they are from North American automakers. So this first edition, we call it as the last four-digit represents which year the standard was released. We call it as the first edition. when you are implementing automotive quality management system in your organization please remember that this is not the only standard we need to implement even after 2016 lot of things are changed in the automotive industry right can you name some changes what is happening in automotive industry after 2016 can anyone just what happens after 2016 with respect to automotive industry yes correct uh, bs4 to bs6 
emission norms what else electric vehicle correct safety norms fuel efficiency a lot of things are keep on changing right so if you are implementing a quality management system which is released on 2016 so how we are going to adopt the changes so what iatf did is they keep on releasing sanction interpretations see look at this october 2019 they have revised and released a sanctions interpretation so they keep on releasing all these sanctions interpretation so when you are implementing iatf 16949 not just refer the standard it is the organization responsibility to refer this sanctions interpretations so that to get this in information it is available in iatf website itself you can go there and get this detail so try to understand what is happening there what are the changes they did so whatever we discussed so far they are considering all those factors i'm not sure everything is addressed in this uh, revised sanction interpretations they they try to address one by one right so recently they have addressed uh, cyber attacks a lot of things are happening under it security so the automotive industry wanted to ensure you have you have a process for addressing this uh, cyber attacks right that's what uh, uh, the recent one they have changed in october 2019 so now what are all covered under automotive this particular standard iatf 16949 is applicable to automotive industry right so what are all covered under this particular scope when you say automotive it includes passenger cars commercial vehicles heavy trucks buses motorcycles and all but iatf standard doesn't include agricultural related vehicles industrial vehicles mining forestry construction vehicles these are all not considered as an automotive this standard iatf 16949 is not applicable to those sectors so those vehicles are not part of this even uh, after market products are also excluded what do you mean by after market products typically those products are not produced or not designed by the automotive oe typically those products are there for comfort convenience even some customization right so those are all not part of this after market products even specialty cars these are also uh, excluded unless done by an uh, oe if the automakers does this then they can go for this certification i am talking about purely certification point of view electric vehicle of course electric vehicles are part of the passenger cars even heavy trucks buses motorcycles can be everything can be converted into an electric vehicle right so we are not talking about what uh, the energy or fuel the vehicle is running we are talking about what is the boundary application of this particular standard so this iatf 16949 when they are developing the standard the iatf standard makers considered this in particular very particular the entire industry always into high risk high cost products because a lot of mass productions are happening right if there is a small safety issue then the recall process the impact on their financial or the image so it it create lot of impacts right so when they are developing the standard they have considered the entire stakeholders what are the needs and expectation of stakeholders no who are all the stakeholders for an automotive industry can you name few stakeholders or we call them as interested parties employee suppliers end users correct so everybody is typing customers 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 i am expecting one particular word a or a i yes what is another name of them a or a i driver certification bodies right regulatory authorities correct right? ha ah, legal authorities so there are a lot of players uh, part of we call them as interested parties or stakeholders investors correct right? lot of people are there so everyone have different requirements but when it's come to automotive industry in recent days people are talking about case c a s e head about that 
case. It is connected vehicle, autonomous vehicle, shared vehicle, electric vehicle. So this is now disrupting the entire automotive industries. Connected vehicle, so vehicle can talk each other, right? The signaling equipments and vehicles can discuss each other, IoT. Autonomous, yes, we are talking about driverless cars. Shared, it's already there, Ola, Uber, right? what else? Of course, electric vehicle. So things are changing around us. So when it's come to stakeholders, they have a lot of views, they have a lot of requirements, concerns with respect to this particular connected, autonomous, shared or electric vehicle. So IIDF considering all these aspects, so they keep on uh, reach them via their trade associations, even the vehicle manufacturers. So when they are developing the standard, this is what they kept the goal, goal of the standard who are practicing automotive quality management system must remember you have to ensure the goal of IATF has achieved. These are the four goals. Continual improvement, defect prevention, reduction of variation and reduction of waste. So these are the four goals of entire IATF 16949. Whatever the additional requirement we are going to see, we call them a supplementary requirement, which is not there in ISO 9001, which is there, which is there in IATF 16949. So those are all exist in the standard, considering these goals in their mind. Can you name some example of uh, defect prevention, what we do in automotive industry? FMEA. How about reduction of variation? SPC, control charts, MSA. How about reduction of waste? Lean. Patients. But whatever the terminology so far we have discussed, is that or is those are all the mandatory requirement in IATF 16949? We can't say everything is mandatory, right? It it's all depends on what is your role, what is the product you produce. Who are all your customer? What is the customer specific requirements? Right? So there are a lot of factors involved around us. But this standard gives you a basic, basic requirements to achieve this particular goal. Right. So now let's talk about this IATF 16949. We are all aware about that ISO standards, ISO 9001, any quality management system standard needs to undergo a revision for every five years. It will not exactly happen on the, every five years. Here and there, there will be some delay, right? So what happened in 2015, ISO 9000 was revised. A lot of uh, changes have incorporated, particularly a lot of business context, sustainability aspects, are all part of the new version of ISO 9000 in 2015. So they have considered risk-based thinking, context of the organization. So a lot of new aspects are added into ISO 9001-2015 version. So what IATF 16949 did is they have incorporated, they fully supported the structure of the new ISO 9000 in 2015. It is called as high level structure or 10 class structure, right? So that is adopted in this. So what they did is, they took automotive industry specific requirement, they are aligned in line with the structure of ISO 9000 requirement, and they have released the standard. If you read, if you see IITF 16949, it doesn't include the content of ISO 9001. It only just aligned the structure outline. But why they have not covered if you are familiar with the earlier version of ISOTS 16949, there you can simply say 
there are some requirement in iso 9001 within the box whatever there in the out of box those are all automotive industry specific requirement that's what the earlier structure but if you look at the new structure of iid about 6949 which was released in 2016 it doesn't include the requirements of iso 9001 why because there are a lot of reasons i would like to highlight one particular reason we all know the industry is changing particularly automotive industry is changing a lot iso 9001 they are revising the standard once in 5 years right so i can't wait to incorporate the industry changes to my automotive standard so that is the one of the reason they have come out of this iso 9001 so now we have seen now in october 2019 recently iit have released sanction interpretations so that's how the industry now operates got it so if you implemented an effective automotive quality management system in line with iit f16949 yes these are the some of the benefits we could say it's a recognition from even regulatory authorities because the standard respects a lot with respect to complying the applicable regulatory requirements and ultimate the aim is you have to produce safe and reliable products meet or exceed customer expectation and improve your process and your documentation system these are all the exact text from the standard i'm not going to spend much time on here let's move to this this is the history of the standard most of you might have aware about this but still i would like to highlight it here one more time so this is based on iso 9000 standard before this there are uh, country specific or north american manufacturers released a qs 9000 for them german manufacturers released vda for them like this the standard was that so iso came into picture they took 94 version of iso 9001 and they have released first edition of automotive quality management system standard iso ts 16949 that is what happening in 1999 then iso 9000 was revised in the year of 2000 they have released they took two years and they have released the next version in automotive quality management system that is second edition of that is the first first edition was happened in 1999 second edition was happened in 2002 then the third edition was based on iso 9000 2008 that was released in 2009 and in 2015 we got new version of iso 9001 and they have came out of this content of iso 9001 they have now released their separate standard right this is what the small history so there are lot of automotive industry specific requirements now if you look at this iit f16949 the entire standard is supplementary requirement So you have to follow whatever written in IIT F16949, and also we need to follow what is there in ISO 9001. I would like to put this. So you, how you are going to read the standard? How you are going to implement the standard? So when you are practicing this, I would like to consider this. This standard is not a stand alone standard. So you have to take or you need to identify what are the automotive customer specific requirement. and what are the requirements in iso 9000 and 2015 and there are some lot of standards given in annex share b of iit f16 but those standards are only guidance purpose unless specified by your customers those guideline standards are not mandatory but when you are defining when you are establishing a quality management system consider all right not just end with the requirement of iit f16949 so now coming to the requirements what are all the requirements in iit f16949 so it is a 10 class structure class 1 2 3 is very generic then 4 to 10 is what the exact requirement in the standard 4 talks about context of the organization 5 is leadership 6 is about planning 7 is about support 8 is an operation and 9 is performance evaluation and 10 is improvement if you look at this title class 4 to 10 you can see a sequence and logic in it the high level structure itself prepared considering this logic in their mind so we could call it like this class number 4 5 6 7 or coming under plan we call them as plan right 
एट इज डू नाइन इज चेक एंड क्लास टेन इज एक्ट सो द पी डी सी ए द एंटायर पी डी सी ए इज पार्ट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम स्टैंडर्ड एंड वी ऑल वी शुड नो दैट एवरी प्रोसेस इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मस्ट फॉलो दिस पी डी सी ए पी डी सी अप्रोच राइट सो दिस इज नॉट जस्ट पी डी सी ए दिस टाइम वेन दे आर रिवाइसिंग द स्टैंडर्ड एज ओ they have included this risk based thinking okay what do you mean by risk based thinking what it is can anyone what do you mean by risk based thinking now every management system every management system talks about this risk based thing fmea is a tool right it's a tool used in a risk management process contingency plan yes it's an again a requirement of the standard we should have a contingency plan in place proactive prevention okay is it not in the earlier version of the standard whatever we have discussing preventive action was there in every management system right if you look at the earlier version of standards what is the last class of the standard any standard that is maybe preventive action right in the earlier approach so how do we understand how do we interpret the risk based the thinking so i'll put this way we have pdc right plan do check act now tell me this preventive action where it should come we have four phases right p d c a which stage which stage or which phase the preventive action is needed perfect everyone is answering plan 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 right now if you look at the earlier approach of our management system where exactly the uh, location of that particular preventive action requirement that's end end of the standard right so that, that that's the change now the other management systems like basic quality management system of iso 9001 remove the terminology preventive action but the concept is still there just remove the terminology instead of that they are using the word risk based thinking okay so i will put this way we all know how to Uh, play this game chess game before making your move in a chess game what do you think before making any move when you are playing a chess game before making any move what do you think that's it that's the that's the risk based thinking right that is one way of risk based thinking not just the risk we have risks and opportunities correct so th that's the another way of understanding this risk based thinking but this risk based thinking is not only applicable to a particular product or a particular manufacturing process or a particular quality management system process it is needed for entire processes whatever the processes you established in your organization it must adhere this pdca and risk based thinking this is what all about the new pdca risk based thinking when you say risk it's not just negative approach it's as well as it's uh, when you say risk is always has impact is negative impact or even positive impact right that's what standard is putting this way risks and opportunities okay so this risk based thinking now pay lot of attention towards this quality management system so when you read the standard you came across lot of these type of terminology shall should may can whenever you see a word shall that is mandatory must rest are all you can interpret based on the context of your organization and product and process and your customer requirements and there are seven quality management principles 
based on this seven quality management principles entire automotive quality management system is developed not just automotive quality management system any quality management system. so what are those seven principles customer focus so whatever you do in your organization we have to determine what exactly your customer wants how we are going to meet the customer or exceed the customer requirements how we are going to achieve customer satisfaction how we are going to comply the applicable statutory regulatory requirements so the top management has to demonstrate their commitment towards this customer focus these principles if you look at the standard there are some requirement which directly addressing this principle and leadership of course yes earlier we used the word top management right in the standard management commitment now that is replaced by this particular word leadership engagement of people in your organization you have qualified trained competent people fine but if you are not engaging them to achieve your business goal there is no use so how to make engage them so there are some requirement in the standard process approach yes we are going to see that lot the entire standard is process approach standard whenever we do audit we have to do process approach audit even the certification body is command auditors they used to do process approach audit then improvement the entire class 10 talks about improvement then another principle is evidence based decision making as part of quality management system every organization is keeping lot of documents and records right plenty of documents and records what is the use of these documents and records what we are going to deal with this any decision happening in your organization that should be based on this facts evidences right so there are some requirement in the standard analysis of data that will help us to address this particular principle then relationship management so any organization they can't independently operate them right they are depending on a lot of suppliers so how they are going to manage or how they are going to maintain the relationship with the suppliers so these are all addressed in this particular relationship main principles so these seven principles based on these seven principles the entire standard is developed we have a separate standard called as iso 9000 which explains a lot about this particular principle